Donc je pense pas. Une autre, une autre fois, j'ai oublié d'empouiller euh, le bouton. Et euh, c'est plein de clés. Et, et euh, nous avons une guest. Il est de. Euh, Bretagne, quoi, je crois. Et. Euh, et euh, il s'appelle euh, Steve Munger. Et euh, alors, euh, il joue le saxophone. Et euh, alors, euh, euh, je veux dire à tout le monde. Euh, le ju justice quoi, c'est dans le cœur. Et le justice, c'est dans, dans le cerveau, mais évidemment dans le cœur. Alors, la liberté pour, pour, pour tous. And now in English, hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, we have a musician tonight here on Planet Glee. Uh, you can see his name is uh, Steve Munger. And without further ado, because you've been waiting, there he is. Uh -huh. Hi, Steve. Hi, thank you for having me on the show. Thank you for being here. Do you, uh, how do you, how would you like to start? Would well, um, I've brought my uh, my saxophone so I can uh, can play uh, for a short while on uh, on this uh, soprano saxophone, and um, I've come here to to talk to you this evening about my my, my sax life. Um, I am a musician, and um, uh, <laughs> basically, I'd like to play a bit of music, and then uh, uh, I'll tell you about my life and how I came to uh, to play music and uh, and become a musician. Yeah, great. So I could um, mention some of um, how I began playing music. Um, yes, um, sorry. I, whenever a musician plays, um, sometimes I I have to uh, rearrange. I have to listen so that the. Well, uh, you're in charge of the yeah. ship. You got to you got to write things. Do yeah. the, I have to do the um, <laughs> the ultimate um, audio control. Okay, no but, problem. Yeah, so, that sounded really good. Uh, was that your own composition? Oh, um, I was just improvising, which is uh, a large mm -hmm. part of, of, of what I do, which is to, to improvise. Um, I um, uh, didn't start playing music until my, um, uh, my late 20s. And uh, up until then, um, I, um, although I'd been a, a music fan like most teenagers are, um, I hadn't actually... Um, even considered playing an instrument. Um, I, my uh, parents' generation, they grew up and everybody played music. Mm -hmm. And um, my parents had, uh, had a piano and uh, my mother uh, uh, used to play piano. Her sister played violin and, and that's what happened. It was a, it was a family um, event, music making. Um, in my generation, I was a boy in the 60s and um, it was TV and the radio. And mm -hmm. um, uh, no one 
in my school really imagined that they might play an instrument. It sounds crazy. We had a small orchestra, but the, uh, the music department was, um, I have to say, uh, very bad. Um, we basically didn't have, have instruments for, for, for kids to play, and um, music was one hour a week, uh, where um, sometimes literally sat in front of a radio for a, for a school's program. Where did um, you grow up, excuse me? Yeah, I grew up um, in Aylesbury, uh, which is a small market town about 40 miles from London. I'm familiar with it, yeah. You are? Yes. Fantastic. All right, great, yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it was. I just think I grew up really thinking that um, you had to have a special talent. Mm -hmm. to play an instrument and um, I thought all the, all the kids um, you know the, the few num uh, around me that might have started playing I, I just assumed they they had some special innate thing that um, that would enable them to play music I, it's it's funny looking back on it because it was just sort of I love music um, and uh, you know bought records and went to see bands and stuff um, but I never imagined about playing an instrument um, but I, I do remember one thing um, in the town that I grew up, Aylesbury, they, they used to have a rock club going for years uh, mm -hmm. called Friars. And um, the local promoter used to get uh, amazing uh, groups to play, maybe once a week in, in a hall, he'd rent it out and, and there'd be a gig. And um, I, I was lucky enough to go and see David Bowie when, um, <laughs> when he started out. And in fact, he you can uh, check it out, it's not in all the books, but he his very first Ziggy Stardust concert the first time he actually played in front of an audience you know as in that persona was in Aylesbury and um, uh, and I got to see it and I remember a few uh, few weeks after that going around to see a friend and um, uh, his name was Alan Fox and he, he was sat there in his uh, in his um, in his dining room and he had the Bowie haircut he had it dyed red and all the rest of it like oh. like like some kids were doing and he had an electric guitar now I knew and everyone else knew that Alan Fox never, <laughs> never played an instrument before, and there he was um, with an electric guitar. And I, I, you know, he was strumming a few chords, and his mum was like really, really proud of him because he'd started out on a, on a guitar. And uh, and I always remembered that. Mm -hmm. So that that came back to me when um, I finally uh, decided to take up an instrument. Hmm. And when did you decide to take up an instrument? When? Um, How many years ago. Oh God! Oh uh, well, well over, well over thirty. Let's say, let's be polite and say over thirty. But um, I was like twenty, twenty, twenty-six, mm -hmm. and um, I was living in Sheffield, and uh, in, in the north of England, and I was uh, I was teaching teaching drama, and um, a long-term relationship. We, uh, I was living with my girlfriend in Sheffield, and uh, we split up, and. Uh, she she hated jazz and I just got into it. I just mm. started um, starting buying jazz records, and um, my girlfriend at the time just couldn't stand any of the music that I that I played, and uh, we split up. It wasn't over that, but um, uh, our relationship ended. Um, she uh, she left and I was uh, uh, living alone, and then I decided to buy a saxophone. So, um, and why the sax? Why the sax? Um, well, I, I was listening to jazz records, but um, you couldn't buy them uh, easily. It, was, it seemed strange that the, the uh, you go to the local record shop and there'd be just rubbish in the jazz section. It'd be, mm -hmm. be totally, totally poor. And I actually um, got my local record store to order my first two jazz records, and it was it was just by chance. I um, I picked out two records that are actually fantastic classics. They, uh, uh, the local music paper was the, um, or not the local one, but the, the, the New Musical Express, it was a national paper, and it had an article about Blue Note records, and, and I just picked two records out at random. And uh, one was by Art Blakey, and the other one was by um, Lee Morgan. And they're, they're just classic records, and that was, that was how I started out. And it was saxophones that, that really got me. And um, especially, in fact... As, as I got into it, Lester Young, um, who was um, the saxophone player with, with Count Basie and uh, with Billie Holiday, and made, I just loved Lester Young. And uh, uh, more than anyone, that was probably the person that made me want to take up the saxophone. And I started out on, on the tenor. And um, in fact, Lester Young, uh, some, he had his own sort of language for communicating. And... Um, uh, he would invent words, he would use words in unusual ways, and some people attribute to Lester Young the origination of the word cool. Ah. So um, whenever you say to someone, 
cool. It probably dates back to, to Lester Young. Uh, not proven, of course, but there were enough people around who, who, who believe that's what happened. So Lester Young definitely had a, a massive influence on me. And um, I was um, teaching, teaching theatre at a college, and uh, um, um, one of my young students uh, was Damien Hand, who um, was in the music department, and he's, he's since become a professional saxophone player. He plays with the James Hunter Six. And um, he was a student at the college, and I sort of befriended him and got to know him. And uh, he, uh, he you know, gave me some lessons when I, when I actually bought a saxophone. And uh, the first one I got, I hitchhiked to buy. I, I hitchhiked um, from my hometown back to Sheffield. And on the way, I went to Leicester. It was all very, very, very romantic. It was in the pouring rain. <laughs> um, but I, I bought a saxophone, uh, and I, I got lucky because it was actually in good condition. Um, took it back to Sheffield and started taking lessons with, uh, with Damien Hand. And um, one thing I, I really want to say is that that that's the most important thing for me is to realise that I spent like 25 plus years thinking that I couldn't play an instrument. So if there's anybody uh, uh, watching who is in that position and thinks, you know, I've always liked a particular instrument, but I, I never felt that I had the, uh, the talent. Well, you know, all you need is the opportunity. And um, nowadays it's much easier to, uh, to do that with the internet, to get information, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, I always tell people, if you get an instrument, whatever it is, um, find a teacher, mm -hmm. a teacher that, that makes sense to you. That's important. Um, and some people uh, are fantastic musicians, but they, they don't necessarily teach well. So that's, it. that's really important to find someone who knows how to, to teach a student. And, um, and then I say uh, 15 minutes a day is better than one hour a week because you build up a habit and you actually mm -hmm. feel the progress. And they're the only two things I, uh, I, I say to people. Um, and, and really that's, that's, that's the key thing. And then you make it a habit and, um, and then you, know, you progress. Do you teach uh, saxophone now? You know, I don't. I, I, I never have taught saxophone. Um, I've, I've actually... <laughs> I've... Um, uh, the embouchure, the actual formation, forming of the lips is a, you know, that, that, pro, that muscular thing. Um, it, I've tried. It, it, takes, yeah, you know, it takes a while. There's a reason. It takes a while, yeah. yeah. But one thing I do remember is um, a young child who, who was barely of speaking age. And um, uh, I remember watching her try to get a sound of a, out of a saxophone. And she wasn't getting very far. And I thought of something. And I said, um, it's like sucking your thumb. Mm. And she immediately mm -hmm. <laughs> curled her lip over a bit, you know, and yeah. she got a great note. So, oh. uh, you know, that's the way to do it. Nice. Yeah, I I tried to play the trumpet, and the, with the trumpet you spit, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but with right. the saxophone you suck your thumb. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. It's it's very vocal. So, um, somebody could pick up this, sax this saxophone, uh, somebody else, and they could play it, and they wouldn't sound like me. Um, so it's, it's your physical, uh, um, your f you know, your physical, your body, your own sort of musculature, everything, your larynx contributes to the sound. And it's, you know, it's, it's a very personal vocal sound, of course. Would you uh, like to play a little bit of something for us that... Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll I'll play a short version of a of a of a tune called um, Pool. Um, the first time, first place I actually played um, was a hole in the road. Um, 
It was it was actually literally a hole in the road, and it was called a hole in the road. <laughs> um, it was in the centre of Sheffield, and um, it, it was a huge sort of circular uh, pedestrian uh, area with different uh, sort of tunnels that went off to various streets. Huh. And, and I, that was where I first played. So I first played in a hole in the road, uh, and I was a busker pretty pretty soon, about six weeks into playing, and I played on the street ever since, wherever I've been. Uh, it's a very l loud instrument, and um, I've never been able to play it in apartments where I've been living. Uh, so uh, it's always been parks, um, sometimes in, oh, often in the street. Um, always been a street musician. How do you like doing that here in San Francisco? Do you get a good response? Uh, you know, you, you <laughs> yeah, I think so. You get, you get various responses. Um, I think that um, it's San Francisco is, is a really good city for musicians uh, in that respect. Um, you can play on the streets here. And in fact, when I first came to, uh, to San Francisco, I was playing in, in, uh, in Golden Gate Park, and a policeman asked me if I was doing it for money. And I said, um, no. And uh, just to be sure, he said, you should go down to market and play on the street there. So there, this was really weird for me coming from England. You know, policemen don't tell you to <laughs> go and play in such and such a street. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a great city for doing it. I, I really enjoy it. Um, you can't live from it. You know, it's a very, it, it, you just, I just do it for, for enjoyment, getting out there uh, in front of the public, you know, my public. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So down on market, often Fridays um, around sort of market and forth on, on a Friday evening after work. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people out lately. Castro is right. a good place to play too. <laughs> now that's interesting. I've never played there. Right. Yeah, I should try that too. Yeah. There's an area on the corner of 18th and Castro that where the where there are shrines and stuff sometimes and yeah I've seen and heard good people there. Have you? Okay, that's a great that's a great idea. I should try that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Adolf Sax. Um, not, not um, uh, nobody knows where the where the clarinet originated or or, yeah. or the guitar, but but y uh, if you learn about saxophone, you know that it it's all down to one man, Adolf Sax, the good Adolf. Uh -huh. um, he was a Belgian uh, who lived in the 1800s and um, started, um, uh, um, invent well, he was a musical inventor and he, uh, he invented the saxophone and his first customers were uh, the, um, the French military, the army, okay. because um, they saw the, the, the fact that it's, a <laughs> it's an incredibly loud instrument that's great for filling a street with a, with a marching band. So. May, I, may I look at it for a second? Sure. Is it, a, is because... The neck kind of looks a little bit like a flute. So is it a descendant of the flute, or does it pre predate the flute? It's probably, um, yeah, it's probably a mix, really, of the clarinet and, and the trumpet. It, oh, it's, okay. uh, it, so it's oh, a brass yeah. instrument, but yeah. it's got a reed. Yeah. So um, sometimes you'll see it described as brass wind. Um, but uh, the, 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 uh, yeah, the, the mechanism is similar to, to the clarinet. Okay. Yeah. Clarinet came first. S clarinet, well, what came first? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, A and um, so, after you started playing sax and meeting musicians, um, now do you go back to England and play, or? Oh no, no, I don't. It would be nice to do that, but no, no. Um, I, it's uh, I did start out. In, in England, but um, I, I've got uh, all my music really is, is here in, in San Francisco. Um, when, um, when I started um, getting interested in, in actually playing, um, uh, I didn't really know musicians. I have hung out with theatre people, and um, mm -hmm. but I had read um, uh, the book Owning Up by, uh, by George Melly, mm -hmm. great English um, uh, writer and uh, and surrealist and um, all round uh, interesting character, um, but he was a jazz singer in the fifties. And um, Owning Up is his autobiography, oh. and it's one of the funniest books you can find, uh, and one of the funniest autobiographies. So I I, I knew a bit about jazz musicians, um, but uh, musicians in general, all, all I'd heard was from sort of reading interviews with uh, with pop stars and stuff. But um, what I did find was a great um, community uh, amongst musicians, and um, I in fact, I, I played on a on a stolen sax for uh, for many years. Um, it was actually stolen from me, um, and I got it back. And I got it back through uh, the music community. Um, I I was living in London uh, mm -hmm. before I moved to San Francisco, 
And I was living in in, um, in South London, um, playing with a few bands, and um, uh, I, you know, it, this was sort of before cell phones and before the internet. Um, and it was at a time when even then, you know, people were saying things like, oh, you know, the crime, the uh, people aren't really caring for one another and all the rest of it. And um, anyway, I had a, a saxophone that was stolen. And it was a soprano, uh, not this one, but um, uh, one that I, uh, I had at that time. And it was stolen from me. I had no idea who took it. And um, it was stolen from me on a Thursday evening. And I was going away. I was leaving London for the weekend. So... Um, uh, I, I, it was stolen, and uh, Friday morning I called all these music music stores, mm -hmm. just local stores uh, in South London, and I said, look, I've, I've lost this saxophone. Here's a serial number. Here's a description. If someone comes in and tries to sell it, you know, you, you'll know it's mine. And um, and then I left London for uh, for the whole weekend, and I was I was out of communication. So um, Sunday evening I come back uh, to to South London. Um, walking through the park you know I'm still still totally burnt because I've lost my saxophone and I run into a local pub landlord and he says oh um I think uh, have you heard the story I think they got your saxophone back and I said what are you talking about and he, and he told me what had happened well uh I'd left on the on the uh, the Friday morning and um uh on the Saturday some guy walked into a local music store he didn't have the saxophone but he, he went in and he described it and he said, I've got it for sale and, um, you know, how much would you trade it, would you give me for it? Ah. So um, they, they tried to get some information and the guy just left and they tried to follow him and, uh, and lost him in, in the streets. And um, so, but they had a description of this guy, right, because he'd been there. And so my friend from the music store that Saturday night is in the pub and telling someone the story and someone else says... By the way, I don't know who this is, even now. They said, um, I know who that guy is. And uh, the description was of a sort of local junkie, some poor guy mm. who just, just stole to, to, to keep things together. Right. And um, over that Saturday and Sunday, they went and knocked on his door and they called him up and they said, you have to give the saxophone back. And I still don't know really who, who those people were, but they just, they just took action. And um, the guy called a friend of mine and said, uh, look, I, I, I didn't steal it, I didn't steal it, but um, I think I know who might have it. Is there a reward? And so this same friend said, no, no, no way. Just mm -hmm. bring it back. So long story short, on the Monday, I go to my local pub and there's this guy sat in the corner with my saxophone and gave it me back and um, started telling me how difficult it was for him to get it back to me but here it was and I bought him a beer and um, that was how that story ended but I mean community that was that was fantastic um, now uh, I know musicians in San Francisco and um, Jethro Jeremiah band um, I've played with for years um, there's so many other great bands that are all connected Stymie and the Pimp Jones Love Orchestra um, Fleeting Trance Soul Scar the Right Time, Scary Little Friends. These are all, these are just San Francisco bands that I know, and they're fantastic, so. Jethro Jeremiah, I've seen that band. I know I've seen that band. Excellent. I don't know if, if they're waiting for us at the door. You know, the, the show went by so fast. It's, are we're, we done? We're, we're, <laughs> we're off. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, yeah, me too. Let me, let me see if I can... Um, Shit. Uh, <laughs> let, let's see if somebody's at the door. Hold on. All right. Oh, you might as well. Will this still be that jacket? You can show it. On yeah, the check the jacket out. Here, let me um, switch switch over so we can see your jacket. Oh yeah, where do I go in here? You could. Um, let's see. There we go. Check it out. <laughs> it's all going on. <laughs> Uh, live television, isn't it great? I always knew I'd make the big time. Oh yeah. All right. Do, do we get to see it? If you um. I think well, sort of, sort of. Oh, you could just stand up where I am, right just, here. Right where you are. All right. Yeah. And. Yeah, look and at this. There we go. 
Yeah. Sam Fran. You just said that. Who, who painted that? You know, I don't know. I, uh, I don't know who the artist was. It's a great job. Well, thank you, Steve. Hey, thank you. Cheers.